Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for doing this with me. It's so fun. Of course. It's very nice to meet you. I've not met you in real life, but this is so wonderful too. Um, and hello, everybody at Hi. ASCS SkinMD. Um, I suppose we should probably start really soon, huh? Let me just make sure. Goldbach is correct. Is that correct? Yeah, that's okay. right. Let me make sure. It. Okay. Um, let me just get my stuff together. Wow, Colombia, Trinidad, Tobago. You got a lot of fans. Yeah, we got a lot of people in very interesting places. So that's really nice. It's always really nice. And we're going to take questions from you all. Actually, did you want to, should we pin something? Actually, I don't know if they told us to do that. Um, you know how to do that? I, I, well, maybe they'll, it's okay. We'll just they'll kind of note them. They'll maybe. figure that out. Okay. Anyway, welcome all of you. I see all of you are still joining. Hello, everybody. Hello, all of you guys. Um, joining us uh, just to introduce ourselves. I am Dr. Sandra Lee, uh, board certified dermatologist. You may more, maybe some of you more know me as my other name, Dr. Pimple Popper um, on social media and things like that. I really want to make a big introduction for you guys to, I want to introduce you guys to Dr. Haley Goldbach, who is also a board certified dermatologist. And um, I would love her to introduce herself a little bit. Where, where do you practice and what, what is your specialty within dermatology? Sure. So I'm Haley Goldbach and I, like Dr. Lee said, board certified dermatologist and dermatologic surgeon. So I do Mohs surgery for skin cancer and I also do some cosmetics and I've been known to pop a few pimples, but not, uh, not as well as Dr. Lee. Well, I wasn't I practice... popping any pimples before this started either. So, <laughs> so that wasn't really my thing either. Um, but this is our st a series. If you guys haven't been part of this before, this is our, our, a new live series that we're doing with the ASDS Skin MD. This is the Instagram. And um, it's really a series on the expertise, skin health, beauty topics from just board certified dermatologists trying to get real good knowledge out to all of you out there. So we really welcome all your questions. And uh, I think that it's really appropriate this month that we're doing this with Dr. Goldbuck because May is Skin Cancer Prevention Month. And she, her specialty within dermatology is skin cancer, skin cancer surgery. She's a Mohs micrographic skin cancer surgeon. And uh, I'm sure she'll go into telling us a little bit more about that. I would like to, if you don't mind, I'm gonna do like a little ice breaker, breaker question. I don't think it's complicated. I, I would never try to throw anything <laughs> at you. But I just thought that this would be really interesting for a lot of people here that, um, uh, a question really that I think I get asked and I think is really important to get across to people out there that are interested in dermatology. You know, what do you think is one of the most wonderful and surprising sp parts of your specialty or going into dermatology, something that you didn't really expect that is really like a wonderful thing? So I feel like that my, uh, and first of all, I forgot to say, someone asked in the comments, I practice at Brown University. I'm an, an academics. Um, so I'm in the Providence, Boston, kind of New York uh, region. Um, so sorry for forgetting that. So what is the thing? So I think that what is particularly for surgery is a lot of people come in so nervous because when we do surgery, they're awake. Um, and, you know, same with you. And you can see it on the, your television show, but is just how wonderful it is as dermatologists to essentially have the time to speak with people. Most doctors have about five minutes, they're typing, 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 and they, they're wonderful. They just do an amazing job. But as dermatologists, we actually get to talk to our patients. And I think that that's the part that I love the most. Um, I find out all sorts of hilarious, fun, touching things about my patients, and I love that. Sorry about my faces, but I'm trying to pin my comment. I was trying to pin the comment of the title, Skin Cancer. This is really just about, it's about all, all of you guys and really informing you all that it's not just something that we think about for older people yes. um so i want to if you if you want to write that down you might be able to pin it actually because you enjoy you join me so if you write that comment and then once you pr once you print it or once you post it and then you hold on to it it'll usually allow you to pin it so in Just, the meantime i'll tell you it's very similar what dr goldbach dr goldbach answered i think one of the most wonderful things about dermatology and the specialty and something that i didn't realize until i actually became a dermatologist is these wonderful relationships you get and you develop with your patients and especially for those of us who do more surgery and you spend time with people i say it's a lot like you're in line at disneyland or at the grocery store and suddenly the person in front or behind you turns around and you have to talk to them for like 
half an hour? You know, what do you say? Sure. And, and it's so actually wonderful. You learn so many interesting things and so many of some, so much of the best advice I have in life, I've actually gotten from my patients and I'm sure you would feel the same. So it's really like I a, totally agree. a and blessing. Beautiful. Yeah. Did you, did you, were you able to do it? I'm not sure. I pinned this oh, comment. Okay. Yeah. So okay, I can great. pin a comment, I think. Great. Okay. Let me just fix this. Okay. So, so anyway, I'm running this. So I'm not really good at running things. Usually people ask me questions. So if you want to, if you want to interject any, all, anyway, you know, let me know. And if you see a question that comes up, please let me to know it too, Dr. Sure. So anyway, welcome everybody. Welcome Brazil. Welcome all you, all, all you from amazing places. I, we love you all. I know that a lot of you are probably interested in being in dermatology or interested in being a dermatologist. So hopefully we can answer some of your questions here. Uh, okay. So like I said, May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month. So it's really the time where, I mean, you, a lot of you may even see on social media, a lot of us dermatologists are posting about it. And uh, I think that a lot of people know about, or at least have know of the word, you know, that M word that we have, melanoma, that is the one that we consider the most dangerous, the most potentially life-threatening and the most pervasive, you know, the, the one that is really a dangerous kind of skin cancer. But a lot of the skin cancers we treat are not necessarily so life-threatening. They're more like self-destruct, you know, just locally destructive. And, yes. and so tell us a little bit about most surgery and why that c comes into play. So most surgery is, it's very similar to just a regular skin cancer, skin cancer surgery where you just cut out the skin cancer. But mm -hmm. instead of taking a margin of normal skin, we actually cut right around where the tumor is. We just remove that and we examine it under the microscope. It's not like a Reese's peanut butter cup. We take the chocolate out, that part's the tumor. The wrapper is the margins of the tumor. We just look at the margins, see if there's any roots going deep to the side. And then we come back and get that little by little. So when we have, we're left with a hole, we're able to reconstruct with kind of a more elegant cosmetic um, closure right. because we take out less. Um, right. And you had mentioned that, so it's mostly for basal cell and squamous cell, though some people do it for melanoma. Um, and people often say, what's the big deal? It's basal cell, it's not a big, so it's not gonna kill me. Um, but we have patients who have lost their eyes to basal cell. It can eat through your nose. It can go into the, the bones of your skull. So it's actually quite a serious uh, skin cancer. And squamous cell actually kills more people um, because it's actually just more prevalent. So I always tell people, you know, don't sleep on skin cancer. It's, it's not, um, you know, the same as breast or lung cancer, but it can be very serious. So. Yeah, and I think that most surgery is such an interesting and, and spectacular technique. I mean, I, I don't know if the, the way that I tell it is sort of become this sort of myth or I've made it, I've embellished it, but it was really kind of invented by somebody that wasn't a dermatologist. They were a medical student going to go into dermatology. Mohs, Frederick Mohs, that's why we have the name. And it's such an, like a, it's sort of the sort of the thing that once you realize what it is or the technique, you go, well, why didn't I think of that? You know, almost almost but we didn't think of that because it's just such an interesting way of doing that you know you're removing the skin cancer and while a person waits you're actually slicing this tissue really thin and looking it under the microscope and checking all the edges and seeing whether there's any positive edge to it and if there is you go back to that specific area and take a little bit more so by doing that we're doing a lot of tissue preservation as we say right like uh and making the scar as small as possible and so there Therefore, having a, a smallest scar with the highest rate of, you know, completely getting rid of this, the lowest rate of recurrence. So it's such a just a fantastic technique that is pretty specific to dermatologists. We were really the ones that um, are, are the pioneers, I suppose, of the technique. And, and, um, and so it's really a great thing to do if you have a, that kind of skin cancer or you have um, this sort of issue, you really should look into this, this method of removal. I totally agree. And I think we have a question about um, sort of training you need. Um, someone's okay. asking, so a fellowship, we have that foreign derms can, you know, attend. Um, and I can't speak to, I don't know if they're directly asking you this, Dr. No, Lee, you um, go ahead. It's all for you. This is all about you. <laughs> um, but I, I'm sure they want to, I want to work with a great Dr. Lee. I don't know if you take students, but you know, for, for dermatologists, 
as Dr. Leah said, we go through medical school for four years, four years of dermatology training. And if you want to be a Mohs surgeon, you go through an additional year of fellowship training. Um, so it does require a lot of training. And a lot of people say, well, should I see a plastic surgeon? And I always tell people, you know, we work very closely with plastic surgery, especially for tumors that involve bone, for example. Um, I send to my plastic surgery colleagues, but we have maybe arguably more experience in terms of facial reconstruction because we're almost exclusively doing facials. So noses, lips, ears, that's what I do all day long. Um, six to eight cases every single day. Um, so that is, um, I think, when I would look for a surgeon, that's something that I would, would look for. Um, and we sometimes work with our plastic surgery colleagues uh, for reconstructions that need to go under general anesthesia. Right, exactly. I mean, I, I think that this is, this is our wheelhouse. This is what we do. And, um, and so everything that has to do with the skin, that's why lipomas even come into play because they're all you know, above that muscle, above that area that we really don't go into. So, so it's really, um, so all of these things, you know, uh, it, it's just, it's interesting that I don't to go through your practice and you start really you know using all the things that we've trained with i mean i was in school until i was in my early 30s most of us are in our late 20s or early 30s until when we get out of school and you know it's really when you start really feeling good about it i think for me it was more like 10 years into my career where you really get it then you know you really understand how the skin works and you start to think about the ways in which you can, you know, make things better for patients. And I think that's really where this whole like, you know, all this pimple popping stuff came out, <laughs> kind of came by accident. But then I realized that I was in the perfect position and had the right skills and techniques as a dermatologist to really address these issues. Well, but you help people, you know, it's like, well, it's as do you, as do we all like, you know, so that's really a special thing. It is. We're very lucky. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> okay. So let me see. So you gave me some questions too, because you kind of interviewed the, you know, the Gen Z, the millennial bunch a little bit. And I think these are really good questions that, uh, that are very, that a lot of people have, you know, would like answers to. So actually, this is a really interesting one. The first one you gave me, what gives you skin cancer besides the sun? Yeah, that is, so everyone's, you know, we, we always kind of harp on about the sun, which yes, the sun is very important. Sunscreen is very important. Um, and I think we're pretty good at that message. Uh, but there's other things that can create skin cancer. So chronic wounds create skin cancer. Mm -hmm. Smoking increases your risk for skin cancer. Um, exposure to toxic chemicals, arsenic, um, yeah. the other industrial solvents, those can create skin cancer. The HPV virus, the, the virus that causes warts, either genital warts or other warts can cause skin cancer. And I think that we don't always kind of explain that. Um, okay. So there's other things that cause, and, and then also random genetic mutations are yeah. a huge part of cancer that are helped along by things like UV damage from the sun or the other factors that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, but we see skin cancers on the genitals. And for the most part, those are not nude sunbathers. Those are yes. other reasons uh, for skin cancer. Right. So someone asked, can chronic wounds like acne can cause skin cancer? So generally when we think about chronic wounds, we think more like ulcerations that are more long-term. Um, and I think you help people with some pretty serious acne on your television show. Um, but I generally think, and you know, you can tell me your experience, but I think of more like chronic ulcerations. Uh, Obsession. Yeah, like chronic wounds that don't heal over a long duration, usually in acne. I mean, we're going to see people that have acne that persists for a while, and it might seem like it's forever, but usually you don't have a, you know, a 60-year-old that has had a pimple since there were since they were a teenager, then, then you're gonna be suspicious that that's not a pimple. And actually that's something that we really, that's something I'm sure you do as well. I certainly tell my patients, one way that I describe you know, when they need to pay attention to a growth or something on them. Because a lot of times people will ask, how can I tell if something's a skin cancer? One of the things, one of the clues may be, if you have something that you think is a pimple or a bug bite and it heals 
and then it comes back again or you know it never yeah. really goes away and it bleeds really easily when you just hit it lightly with a washcloth or try to wash your wash your skin so those are all sort of clues that you might have one of these don't worry too much because usually they're a non-life-threatening type of skin cancer just a locally invasive skin right. cancer but again it's still that 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 skin cancer that we want that you should get removed you are exactly right that whole i have a pimple that is a yeah. um you know that i have patients who say oh i have this pimple if you have a pimple longer than a year honestly longer than what do we think a month you should really yeah. see a dermatologist yeah that so that's changed. yeah that's the clue really like if you have something that persists in general it comes and goes it never really goes away certainly if it bleeds easily please bring that to the attention of your dermatologist please so actually, that was a good answer to the next question that you gave me here. So what is, oh, this is a good one. Let me hear. See, I have answers to these too. So it's really interesting when I hear your answers, which I agree with too, when they're just adding to my, you know, adding to my, my like armamentarium here. <laughs> what is the most, mis what is the one mistake most people make when they put on sunscreen? I want you to go first. I want to hear what oh, you Oh, no. Have. <laughs> well, my, this, well, I think that my my reasoning is not so much that they don't put on sunscreen. I feel that it's we really drilled it into people to put yeah. on sunscreen. Um, and it's more that I feel that people don't reapply. So yeah, and then true. they think that a tan is actually fine, you know, like, so I tell people, look, if you go somewhere and you're you, you think you have good sunscreen, if you get any kind of color at all, you're you don't have sunscreen on you don't have proper coverage. So and if you do not follow Dr. Pimple Popper on TikTok, you okay. should. Get the follow, get on TikTok. She made a very cute duet with someone saying, I don't see you reapplying sunscreen. So what she brought right. up, she has, and I don't, I, yes. I need to Oh, buy. I have it right here. <laughs> let me see your, let me see the product. Uh, I have powdered sunscreen. This yeah. is called UV Bounce, but there's a bunch of different brands. Here's like this a simpler is my one, but yeah. I hear Dr. Lee's has a really, really easy to put on finish. Yes. So it's similar. It's just, and it's really nice because it's like makeup. You know, yes. you put it on and you can, that's the main, the two main, there's three main populations of people that I think are very um, open to this. One would be the uh, males that don't like to put sunscreen on because they don't like to get the tacky fingernails, yeah. especially if they're golfing. And at the turn, they don't want to put sunscreen on. And, you know, at, after nine holes and two hours and then wash their hands, this is really good for the top of the head, for the yeah. face. At little kids that hate having their parents smear on sunscreen you should put a good coating of cream on during the day but maybe touching it up through the day you can use this and sometimes they like to mimic their mom you know but putting on makeup that's so good. Day, right and then for us that wear makeup on and you don't want to mess up your makeup and you know you you if you're driving home at the end of the day and the sun is hitting you in the car window, you don't have sunscreen on if the last time you put it on was going to work. So this is really nice and convenient to put in your car. You don't even have to look in the, in the mirror. Absolutely. Really. And someone on asked about, you know, how do you get on your scalp? And I don't know if that person, you know, is bald or has hair, but if you have hair, this is so good for your part. You can right. kind of dust it on. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you recommend, but for my patients who have beards, like you described that golfing patient, mm -hmm. I also recommend a gel. Because yes. I hate that kind of whiteness that gets in right. me, you know, in the beard region. So I hope that answers that question. Yeah, that's actually really good. Most gels are very good in general for any hair bearing area. Yes. Like there's a lot of products or prescription, even creams and, and lotions that come in a gel form specifically for this reason. So keep that in mind, you guys. That's a really great way to get it in those areas. Because yeah. it's hard to get it on the skin with the hair in the way. I mean, we're, we're, we're human. I forget to reapply. You know, like you, I just moved from Southern California where Dr. Mm -hmm. Lee lives. And, you know, you, you, I love to go to Malibu if I'm walking on the beach. We don't always reapply. We try mm -hmm. to. So bring the powder, bring a hat. Someone also right. asked about like facial, what sunscreens they like. I just, this is the one I'm using right now. I like to try a different thing each month, but um, this is the, the one mm -hmm. I'm currently using. Um, Dr. Lee, I believe you have a sunscreen in your line as well. Do you have one? To we show? do. Yes, we do. Uh, I don't have, this is the main sunscreen I brought with me right now, but I, I have, you know, we have one too that's more a chemical based sunscreen because I think that helps more with acne, doesn't clog your pores. Absolutely. Much, so that sort of thing. Um, but yes, there's all types of wonderful sunscreens. And really the biggest step is to apply that sunscreen. That's really oh. all it's all, all it's about. So And Dr. Lee, not to interrupt, but someone wants to know where they can get your powders. How can people purchase oh. that product? You're so sweet. These are all at slmdskincare.com. And actually, though, I think this one, certainly my acne skincare line is at Target stores. So oh. that's super exciting. I know that's that's so exciting. So, Dr. so you Lee can get truly brought too. dermatology to the people. I love it. <laughs> 
trying. We're all trying. We're all yeah. trying. We're also lucky to be dermatologists. So, and we are a, a pretty um, wonderful group. I, I think we're all really supportive of, of each other in general. So it's really nice. So, do you miss California? I do. Yeah, I love California. I do. We um, is this where I you live? Been... Like mainly, are you from the East Coast, Boston area? I'm uh -huh. from the East Coast. I went to UCLA for my residency. Yes. And then after I had my baby, we decided to, you know, take this job and be near my, my family. So that's wonderful. And that's great when you have a baby, when you have a young yeah. baby being near your family is spectacular. So yes. I went to, I didn't, I went to UCLA undergrad. So I know it pretty Bella well Bruins. as well, but we were there at totally different times. I could have been your nanny or something when you were a kid, probably. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. Here's a question that I might be able to answer a little bit too. Um, where do cysts come from and are they ever skin cancer? I don't know if you want to answer that first. Well, do you want to, you want to answer if they're ever skin no, cancer? No, I'm sure you're going to be as, you're going to say the same thing that I would say. I'm sure. No, I mean, I, I, um, people always ask, and I will tell you, 95% of my patients bring up Dr. Lee, you know, is this like Dr. Pimple Popper? And they always want to see the cyst now, mm -hmm. which I think is fabulous because yeah. I love, I think they're great. Um, so I tell them cysts are actually derived from the hair follicle. They're not made of hair, but they're from the same cells that make up kind of the top part of the hair follicle. And they're very thin, just one cell layer thick and filled with kind of a dead skin debris, which is what Dr. Lee kind of is expressing in some of her videos. Right. Right. And the cysts that are mostly in those type of videos are not skin cancer. They're totally benign, but just like we talked about the pimple, if you have a cyst that's growing, that's really painful, um, that for whatever reason doesn't look right, you should get it removed um, because sometimes we send it in and there's things like subcutaneous melanoma, melanoma under the surface of the skin. So it's important to actually get those checked out as well. Yeah, I, I've certainly had that before, actually. I filmed that sort of thing where it ended up being like a melanoma or ended up being something else. So yeah, that happens. And it's rare, but it happens. Um, you know, interestingly, I, the way I describe a cyst is probably not completely correct, but I think it's a way to, uh, it's just a way that people understand it. I, I kind of say that a cyst, like an epidermoid cyst, which is the yeah. most common kind that we see, which is, by the way, what other non-dermatologists may call a sebaceous cyst. We don't, we don't call them sebaceous cysts because they're not truly derived from sebaceous gland. Um, so anyway, uh, an, an epidermoid cyst, which is that common one that you see that I remove, um, I, people ask all the time while I'm removing it, well, how, why am I getting this? How did I get this? And I describe it as um, sort of like a, it's sort of like your skin turned inwards into the, and created the sac under the skin. And then now, you know, normally our skin sheds out into the universe, but now it's shedding into this contained balloon. So that's why it's filled with wet or macerated skin cells, dead skin cells that are shedding. And that's why it can grow. And so it can grow and grow because it's continuing to shed in there. And the problem is, is, the big problem is that sometimes people, and I understand why they do this, because it's tempting, you want to squeeze it. So you squeeze it and you might squeeze some of the contents out. But what happens is either it comes back, it grows back, or it gets inflamed and mad. So yeah. um, really, you don't want to do that. You want to minimize that because as long as you have that sac in there that is shedding cells are growing these dead skin cells and shedding them you're going to have this growth there so the whole goal the reason i'm doing the surgery there is to try to remove that entire sac so that it doesn't grow back exactly and i think the same advice someone asked about skin tags kind of applies to skin tags mm -hmm. things that are you know if they're growing if they are abnormal looking you know get, go see a dermatologist right truly right. You know, you have nothing yeah. to lose and you might- But a lot of skin tags that are quite big are benign. Yes, <laughs> But they're true. quite shocking how big they, they can get sometimes. You have seen yes. some large, large I have, skin tags. Oh my I don't, goodness. Yes, I don't mind those, by the way. Bring them on over. They're great. To, they're easy to- Easy then. <laughs> so easy to do. Um, okay. So what do you do if you get a sunburn? What would you do? What do you tell people? First, it's I been try. a long time though, probably many, many decades. Since okay. Had. Actually though, I have <laughs> to admit, if we're going to be totally honest, this Instagram live is just among friends. Um, I got a sunburn so bad in medical school that I had a fever. Okay. So oh, wow, okay. I know even dermatologists mess up. I fell asleep in the sun. Um, so 
we are not perfect. Like we are absolutely human beings. Um, but so what you should do is, you know, get out of the sun immediately and you can take, you know, a cool bath. You can take Advil, you know, acetaminophen, something like that to kind of decrease the swelling. But recent research actually suggests that you can take a high dose of vitamin D. So a high dose of oral vitamin D actually decreases the sunburn cells in the skin. So now I started doing that. If I get a little too much sun, I take kind of a super dose of vitamin D. What, what would that dose be about? Like, what are you talking so about? It, I mean, they, they recommend like almost like hitting a hundred thousand IU. So I actually, okay. I don't take that much. I just take, uh, I have a, I have some 5,000 IUs. I take like three or four of those. Okay. Um, and a couple people asked earlier, you know, what about getting vitamin D with sunscreen? So I always take an oral vitamin D supplement. Mm -hmm. And I know that I'm not perfect putting my sunscreen on. So you're getting mm -hmm. some of that vitamin D anyway. Right. But that's personally what I do. Any, any other tips for me if I get a, if I'm bad again and get a sunburn? Um, I think I, I would, I mean, I didn't know about that Ben and D. So that's really good knowledge for me. I think I remember something about um, really aspirin helping because it as part, it kind of helps to block the pathway of creating yes. a sunburn. Um, but you know, in a way too, I don't love telling, I mean, I want to help really, you know, alleviate the pain of a sunburn, but I don't want to tell people, oh, I'm going to pop some aspirin and then I'm going to go out in the sun because I'm not going to no. get a sunburn. Right. You, know, you don't want to give people that advice either because you're still, that doesn't mean that you're not going to get the damage that can come from a sunburn. You know, what it's doing is it can actually, you know, physically damage the DNA in our skin and then cause it to mutate or something go awry. And that's when a, a skin cancer can form. Yes. Don't be like me, be better than me. And someone asked about aloe vera gel. I think that's fine if it's soothing, but it doesn't, unfortunately, like Dr. Yeah. Lee said, doesn't reverse those, those pyrimidine dimers, the, the bonds in your DNA, you actually carry forward. So I have those probably for my sunburn in med school. And, yes. you know, you just have to be better going forward. Yeah. That's it. That it really is. It's about changing, you know, your lifestyle and, and yeah. not having as much. Because, you know, I'm sure you have that all the time, too, with a lot of our patients that say, oh, when I was a kid, my parents would stick me out there with the diaper or just sitting out all day in the sun. <laughs> With so those, that was a different time. Yes, it was a different. Time. I did that. So, you know, and my dad's a dermatologist. You should have seen him standing over me going. Well, your skin is beautiful. You know? So you must. Well, I mean, that. I was lucky that I inherited the dark, you know, this this Asian uh, darker protection here. But yeah, I remember that he would stand over me and I would have the, the thing like this. And he would say, what are you doing? You're a dermatologist's daughter. And I would say, you're not the boss of me, dad. <laughs> Kids, <laughs> man, you know? Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. So uh, what else can we ask here? So what is the, okay, well, what's the skincare routine of the skin cancer surgeon? I want to know the skincare routine. <sighs> okay, so, well, <laughs> I, I'm sure it's like you. My skincare routine changes every month, depending on what my skin needs, depending, honestly, if I get some new products to try, I like to try it out so I can, you know, let my patients know. Um, and since I've had a baby, it's gotten a lot simpler <laughs> because you just don't have time. How old is your baby? She's 10 months old. Oh, how, is this your first? Yeah, she's our first. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So she's, she's a love. Um, yeah. but so now what I do is I get up in the morning and I use a sulfur based cleanser because I have a little bit of that kind of Irish, like rosacea redness of my skin. Um, and then I put on my sunscreen. So I'm using this right now because um i've gotten a little crunchy to be honest with you so i'm, I'm a little okay. I'm into the mineral sunscreens at the moment uh -huh. um and then i i put on like some powder over top of that and i'm wearing an n95 at work so i don't do a whole lot else right um and thank you someone said congratulations that's so sweet thanks anastasia mm -hmm. and then in the evening i use my prescription strength retinoid um those are really yes. important we all I, use the retinoids. We've drilled that into it now. That's retinoids, the whole drilling. Retinoids. Yes. I'm using a, right now I'm using a Skin Medica. Um, this is just a, it's a hyal hyaluronic acid. And I have the best hack for people who want something hmm. easy and cheap. So I was using Vaseline, but using, um, someone asked what sunscreen. It's the um, ISDIN, this one. It's really, it goes on really easily. I'll show you. Um, not paid. This one's a tinted one. Mm-hmm but it's good even for light skin tones yes, or darker skin tones. A lot of the tints really, people think that it has to match your skin tone, but it really is to offset no. the white cast yeah. of the sunscreen. And it really matches with pretty much everybody's skin tone. And then it doesn't matter dark, really dark or really light, it does well. And it's important because um, it's only tinted sunscreens that can help protect against visible light. 
So the UV, of course, as we know, is, you know, your basic sunscreen. But if you're worried about visible light, if you're prone to the dark spots, the melasma, like some Asian people have a lot of melasma or, you know, sunspots, you have to wear a tinted sunscreen for that iron oxide. So someone's asking about ethnic skin. So I would recommend that. Um, and then someone said, yeah, you can skip the makeup. So my hack, though, is instead of using Vaseline, I borrowed this from my daughter. This is pipette, not paid by them, but it's a non- uh, petrolatum based ointment and it's great for like lips or like giving so a what is it made out of if it's not petrolatum i would think, so I think it's all oil like based um it has okay. a scent, like i think it's it has jojoba and has sunflower oil which i put on my daughter's okay. as so there's a little fragrance to it or smell to it too no nope, nice. nothing no really you which, think which i love because i'm yes little... we are usually we are usually very sensitive dermatologists in general were really kind of anti fragrances because we've seen a lot of people that react to it they'll get like irritation to it They're even if they go and put a fragrance on in the sun you can get a certain kind of rash there's all kinds of things associated with fragrances so most of us are really kind of scared off by that you know we don't really like a lot of stuff that have fragrances in it totally. so and it dries you out too so yeah, it dries there's you a lot out. of things with that yeah. right. i'm with you is your skin oily or dry? Or I know you have a more rosacea, the red, the red base, and I have you more know, of a brown yeah, so base. But... All of the above, like you know, I think it's so like, you're the combo, you know, like everybody says, a little bit of everything. I'm super dry, so I'm dry? like on the, I'm very dry. I'm I'm also atopic. So when I was a kid, I had really bad atopic dermatitis, which is like a, it's like a ex, a form of eczema yeah. that you know is your body just is not as good at creating its own moisture, your own built-in moisture. So really, that's a thing that you guys should be happy about. I know a lot of people hate that their skin is oily, but you have a built-in moisturizer, and it's actually going to keep you looking younger for longer, too. So it's all a bonus. So don't complain about it too much. Um, because I'm dry. I, I could use some of your moisture, your natural moisture, some of these people's natural I'll moisture. I'll send you some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I definitely use a lot of moisturizer. I'm really basic and simple with my uh, skincare. Because I'm dry, um, washing my face dries me out more. And I tend to really do a good cleaning of my face at night. And in the morning, I really don't wash my face because I sleep on clean sheets. And, you know, I'm relatively clean, except for the little crunchies you might have in different, you know, in the corners of your eyes or something, you know, that I might just rinse off. But I don't really do a heavy cleaning of my face. That's and that just yeah. is a difference because I'm, I'm, I'm not oily. Some people that are really oily, they might choose to wash their face a few times a day. And really so... I think the key there, and just like even with us, as you can see, we have different skincare routines. And I think that has, that's really important for people to understand too. Like you don't, you, you probably shouldn't really follow the skincare routine of your best friend or, you know, more likely maybe your mom actually, because you might inherit the same kind of skin that she has. Um, so just realize that, that you're not a failure if you're trying a skincare product that somebody else swears by and it doesn't work for you. The key is really understanding what kind of skin you have and what you're more prone to and things like that. And then you can find the right sort of products that are gonna work well for you. But in general, we talk about like retinol or retin-A being a great product for pretty much everybody because we do know that's one of the things that we know over time used chronically can help to really even minimize the formation of skin cancers and, and fine lines and wrinkles and, you know, certainly acne when you're a kid and all that, all this kind of good stuff. So that's why we, we talk about it so much. I totally agree. Yeah. It's not, it's not one size fits all. And that's mm -hmm. what people, you know, people will try to sell you different things and you, you have to find what works for you and talk with a dermatologist. This is, this quite literally what we do. And this is what we're here for. So yes, if you guys have any for questions for us, please let us know. Absolutely. Or tell us where you guys are from. We'd love to. Yes. I mine is scrolling, so you might have to speak okay. up for me. We got, um, first of all, I want to just shout out everyone shoot. who's coming. We see Italy. Yes, we have. Um, crazy. Julia. I'm so bad with flags. So sometimes your flags, you might have to tell me what they are. I know Brazil because I see it all the time, but some of the we other see, ones I'm like. We see in Italy. I see a Venezuela. That's free. Oh, see. Wrong. Okay. You're fancy. I don't know. I don't know anyone's flags. I don't know. Well, no, they're saying it because I'm. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. I hope that, that I would know better. But you have a lot of fans on here. And someone, and someone, and this is Donna from Boston. Is everyone just from? Can you put well, the you name? Got of your it. Well, see, she's from Boston. Dr. Haley Goldbach. Remember her too. You got to follow her too. Oh yeah, I don't have. I only have like eleven 1 hundred followers, but I I'm gonna try doing more Instagram. And I know we got some questions that I didn't get to, like keratosis pilaris. So I might try doing some some posts that would about be those. You should. I'm learning how to how to Instagram. Someone says, and this is important. Um, Dr. Lee, can you put the name of 
your product at the bottom of the page. So again, yes, I don't know how to tag it though, but I, I will say SLMD skincare. SLMD, SLMD Sandra Lee MD skincare dot com, and like I said, it is at Target stores too. Some of my line is, and we have really big news that I can't actually say yet, but we are going to be branching out. I can't tell you yet. I think I. I, I actually can't even tell you. I think it's next month I get to tell you. I have to yeah, wait for a long time. They like made me film all this stuff and it's like a whole month before I can I, actually say anything. I just so. want to say, I think it's great because, you know, it's really important to get, there's so much skincare on the market. And I think that's why we're getting a lot of questions about different products. Yeah. It's very confusing, but, you know, I've seen Dr. Lee's line and it's, you know, you want that medical grade skincare, right. but it's more accessible. So, right. you know, I like to go high, low. You want some products from Target, some from your dermatologist, yes. um, but, you know, you might as well get it from someone who is a board certified dermatologist who studied skin for right. years. Right. And, and the thing though, is what I think it really came naturally for me to do that. Not so much just because I am saying that people need to buy my skincare line. It's more that I was getting questions about things and they, you know, and I knew that, I was entertaining people, but also educating them like yeah. secretly in a way, like all these people know what a lipoma is now, which is ridiculous. You know, five-year-old comes up to me and said they like love lipomas. I mean, that's crazy. That's so to hilarious. have people, to have <laughs> people like understand and learn and kind of understand what retinol does or what salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide or glycolic acid, what, why that can help with, you know, keratosis pilaris or even what keratosis pilaris is, those are huge steps for us. And so this is why. Um, it's so great that there's so many dermatologists out there educating people on social media and people are learning and they're understanding it. And I think that that is key too, because it really gives people the feeling of control. Like that's one of the reasons I show people cysts actually, or their lipomas. It's sort of like you're saying like, I, you, that thing didn't own me. I owned it. And now I'm saying goodbye. And so it's sort of like that with like, figuring out a skincare line best for you. Like if you learn and understand these things, number one, you're more willing to use it and try it and really give it a good try. And number two, you can actually feel proud that you did this yourself. So that's, what's really nice. And so that was really what this whole skincare line was about. More like a democratizing dermatology. We say, we're just trying to bring things out there that we dermatologists recommend. And we would, you know, um, we would recommend to our own patients, that kind I of thing. That's, that's exactly it. I just wanted to quickly say, so, Hi to Carmen. Who can you say hi to Carmen? She really wanted you to say hi. Hi, Carmen. I know. I, I don't know. I don't have any more. I know. Um, I'm seeing all the comments. Someone but, has asked a couple times about protecting your head for thinning hair. I think a hat. Honestly, it sounds crazy, but. And the sunscreen and the part. I don't do the. I do the. Um, I will spray sunscreen on my yeah. fingers or use one of the lotions and just push it because I will get a sunburn in my part if I'm not careful. Absolutely. Um, and then you can use the powder. That, like, that yes. Powder. And the powder afterwards. Yeah. I like the, you know, powdering. If I have a friend's head that's a little balding, I might just go reach over and cover their <laughs> head that kind of it. thing just, just give them a little protection that kind of thing just a but little it, yeah it makes it easy yes that, but a hat is very important yes and someone asked in the q a you know what if they're interested in becoming a dermatologist and do you have any tips for them so can you answer that one? Oh, i mean i think that uh I, we've all it, it's a it's a long it's a long road but it's a very very um you know rewarding field it, you know i feel like a lot of people might think that dermatology might be, you know, boring or very simple. You're just doing a certain number of things. I mean, how interesting can the skin get? But the skin is like, it's a whole nother language. And there's so many actually different specialties within it. You know, she, uh, Dr. Goldbach here is a Mohs surgeon. I happen to be a pimple popper. I, don't, I wasn't necessarily a pimple popper to start off with. But there's other people that are like pediatric, you know, dermatologists. They just see kids that, you know, there are people that, uh, um, you know, just um, do lab work and they're trying to, well, they, they do like a lot of immune diseases or blistering disorders. There's a whole big, wide and varied field. There's people that just look under the microscope and diagnose the conditions through the tissues that we set, tissue that we send them. So it's such an interesting and varied thing. You know, there's like people who just do Botox and fillers, not just, but all these sorts of things. There's just different parts of our field and you really can find what you love I would think that anybody could find something that they love within it. Um, but my advice in terms of work to do, just stay in school and yeah. work hard. Try to um, show how serious you are about it. That's essentially it. People want to see that you really want to be there. So you try to, you know, go and take that extra step and, and, and try to do research or try to 
you know, meet dermatologists and get to know them and have them make sure that they want to work with you for a for year, few years, certainly. Absolutely. And I don't know if you have any other advice there. I think but, that's spot on, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's hard. talking about being an NP and transitioning. And I think, you know, we do work with our uh, colleagues who are, you know, mid-level um, nurse practitioners, PAs who are wonderful. I would just recommend, you know, working with a dermatologist. You know, we right. study it for years and years. It's definitely not something you can learn in like a weekend or even a year. Um, but, you know, we work really closely with, I work with nurses and also medical assistants. And honestly, they're the heart and soul of my job. I adore them they give tremendous advice to patients. So I think, you know, if you're interested, you know, do it the right way and really learn yes. about the skin. Um, you know, yeah, it, the it takes, I mean, side so much to learn. There yeah. really is. And it's, it, you become the expert. We, we say it's the study of the skin, the hair and the nails. Yes. So it's all of that. Yes. And, yes. Um, and it's a whole nother language. Like we can speak with each other and describe things that I don't think other people, they'll be like, huh? What are you, what are you even saying? I mean, sometimes will you not like give somebody a diagnosis and tell them what it is just to tell them just to, you know, like, I know what's say, up. Yes. Oh, that that's Nataldra Parasthetica <laughs> or, you know, like, in the, I know I'm going to sound like super smart by saying this, but this is, we have is. like a Harry we, Potter name in Latin yeah. for everything. We have crazy names for all skin conditions and descriptions too. Yeah. You know, if somebody's a dermatologist, the way that they describe a skin condition, because then when you describe it to me, I actually know exactly what it is in my mind, you know, the way yeah. we can, we describe things. So, so true. So anyway, um, I think it's probably late over there. You have your, is your baby sleeping? What, what is your baby's name? Her name is Sadie. Yes. What is it? Sadie? Sadie. Yes. Oh, how cute. Yeah. Sadie just, so, I put her to bed. She's, uh, okay. Yeah. So she's good sleeper then. Mama so needs a glass of wine. So, so okay. Bed, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, is there, if there are any other questions, otherwise I really want to say thank you guys for joining us, you know, and thank you for, I mean, I know that this subject is a little bit, maybe a little dry for a lot of you guys, but I really, we really thank you for listening in. And Dr. Goldbach, I, now that I met you, I mean, we got to hang out and have a glass of wine together. That would be Absolutely. Good. I would love that. Um, there are some questions that we didn't get to. So hopefully okay. maybe Whatever you we, can, we can answer them on, you know, either our Instagram or some other um, venue. Someone's asking about DMSPs. They're really, really, really wonderful questions. So sure, if you want to answer any now too, that's fine. I just didn't want to, I didn't oh, know, yeah. you know, if you had a baby that was there, like needed no, You were very sweet. Let me quickly, DMSP, um, oh, I yeah. wouldn't give specific medical advice, but that's a serious, that's a serious form of, it's on the fibrosarcomatous um, spectrum, meaning it's a, it's more of a tissue, of almost muscle type tissue. So it's something that you should see a, a um, oncologist, surgical oncologist right. or a dermatologist about. Someone wants to buy you something. Do you ever visit Brazil, <laughs> Dr. Lee? I have not, but I was supposed to go to a wedding like, I don't know, 10 years ago, but it, I it didn't happen. And uh, I plan to go. I would love to go. I mean, I did have a friend that hid a comedone extractor. I used to go around and had friends like hide like a like a little scavenger hunt, hide a little comedone extractor and people would find it all around the world. It was so amazing. So maybe the ne I mean, if I go the next time, look out for it because I'll be hiding one myself. Okay, so, you have a lot fun. of fans in Brazil, I just have to say. Yes, some, some Brazil people... knows what go, goes on. If you have they, a lot of Brazil fans, you know that you go in places, let me tell you. We have a wonderful resident at Brown, uh, Dr. Della Costa is from Brazil. And they, they I just, I, I'd love to go someday too, but a lot mm -hmm. of hellos from Brazil, what's good for brown spots in the face. I would say talk to dermatologists, there's some creams, some lasers, all sorts of different things. It depends try. on what the brown spot is too and how superficial it is in the skin, so. That's you know, a good point. Depends yep. on your skin color and your own skin type too, how, what kind of treatments you have. So um, yes, staying so, out of the sun is key. If you want to prevent them in the first place, try absolutely. to work with them Some of these are in Portuguese. And I, unfortunately, I don't oh, speak Portuguese. Bom dia. I know how to say that. <laughs> I love it. that. And I got, we're getting a lot of Brazil uh, comments. Um, and then best laser treatment for deep wrinkles. So I just did a post on Instagram about different laser types. So maybe check that out. Do you do lasers? You use a lot of I, I do. I, I mean, I don't do it as many lasers. I did a fellowship with Dr. Fitzpatrick, a big laser, uh, right. laser guru. So we did, I got to have every kind of laser at my fingertips that was, is imaginable. But I do do like, la I do laser resurfacing, CO2, fractionated laser perfect. resurfacing. And um, that's probably the main thing. And that's probably what you did, right, for, um, for these wrinkles. That's usually what we use for wrinkles. Yeah, so a deep, kind of a deep laser yeah. for, for really deep wrinkles. Someone's asking about molluscum. And I think that's, there's a couple different things, but people dot a little, actually 
a beetle juice on it that mm -hmm. makes them blister up. I don't know if you have a different thing. Some people use Retin-A. No, we, we use that. I like to tell that little story that I think it was like, I, I, maybe I'm, again, I make, I've been in practice for a long time. So sometimes things become like telephone and then you start saying it a certain way. But I think that they discovered it. I like to say it's like they discovered it in another country. I think it was Africa. There's this beetle that caused a blister when you step on it and people were stepping on it. And then they realized they can make it into a synthetic form. And now this, pro this ingredient in it can occur when you apply it to any area on the skin, it creates a blister later. That's my story. I, <laughs> but it could my, be totally wrong. You know what? I have a story too. I don't know if it's crazy, but I heard it was a mating gift. Now that sounds truly oh. crazy. From one beetle to another. Oh, have they give that? each other like a blister, a, p a blister, like, like a no. Like a, I don't know. Like they give that. each other like this compound. I'm, that oh, could be. okay. That could be too. We have to do. Someone's gonna have to do research and let us know. On um, cantharidin, <laughs> we'll have to see. And then I think it's so. cantharone or cantharidin that is the is the product. But yes, we'll do that too. Or a lot of times in Luscum, it's almost like a little pearl in a way, like a millium, like a, where you you can kind of shell it out if you numb it and you kind of scratch at it with a curette, like a little kind of spoon device. You can see a little pearl come out, and that's another way that you can get rid of it. But of course, you know you have to put some numbing in the area because that would that would probably hurt without numbing. And someone said, are there fewer cases of skin cancer in countries with colder climates? Or is it unrelated as, as if it were a geographic factor? So there are the most cases of skin cancer, I think, per capita, I believe, in Australia. So that is under, unfortunately, a hole in the ozone. So climate change is, is going to be a huge factor in skin cancer. So very important. Um, I think it's a combination, though, too, of probably the lighter skin color and, yes. versus, and yeah. the area of the country of the world that you have less, that you have more sun. Um, probably because, you know, having a darker skin color is a, has a little protection um, to you and you True. have a, but anyone of any skin color, which is really important to say, can get a skin cancer. And that's a mist, yeah. right? Right. People think. Yes. Yeah, that's great. So yeah. Um, but sometimes sun that's intermittent is actually more uh, a risk for melanoma. So if you're only getting sun in the summer, that's a higher risk for melanoma, more constant sun maybe more risk for basal cell or squamous cell. That's at least what I tell my patients. Yeah, and I will say that I, um, you know, I, I did my training in the Midwest and I'm sure in the East Coast too, you get intermittent sun, you get certain times of the year where you get a lot of sun and I definitely see a lot of skin cancer in those areas. And that's because when you do get the sun, you get really excited about it. And sometimes yes. you forget how to really protect yourself and you get those sunburns. So yeah. that's another thing, way to think about it. That's wonderful. And I think that was most of the questions. Okay. Um, let me see. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you, you all for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Goldbuck, for Thank for you, Dr. Lee. Thank you and for ASDS for sponsoring this. Thank you to the ASDS. I'm a huge Dr. Lee fan. Everyone oh. should follow her. She's been, she is not only a wonderful dermatologist, TV star, she's also a really good uh, mentor and gives very generously of her time to um, other dermatologists. Uh, she's very, so she's on our social media committee and has just been wonderful. So I'm, I'm a huge fan. Thank well, you. you know what? It means more than me to me than anything to actually have my colleagues like um, say that they're, you know, that they, that they, that I'm one of them really. I, that means more than me because I feel that sometimes I'm, you know, I'm out on this island here and I'm like, I just want, all I want to do is take good care of my patients and not make a mockery of my specialty. <laughs> you know, those are the two things I'm trying no, you to do. You, so you brought I'm so much awareness. Thank you. I yeah, really so appreciate it. It's wonderful, so. but thank you. We'll have to have that glass of wine. Yes, you will. It's a, it's a rain check for sure. Take care, everybody. And thank you, guys. And, and happy popping, for everybody. Actually, don't really pop, but you know, have a pop. Let Dr. Lee pop. That's it. Yes. <laughs> <All> <laughs> okay. Right, bye, bye, everybody. Take care.